This is super exciting. How's it going? Hope you guys are all doing great. Today I want to share with you guys how I bred Cynodonis lucipinus and I didn't get a whole bunch from them but I didn't do any work they kind of bred in the community and just kind of did their thing and I'll just go ahead and show you how I did that right about now and here we have the Cynodonis lucipinus tank these are the fish that I'm going to show you how I bred them. These fish are really cool. African catfish, often mistaken with the Petrocola, which they are two different types of fish. They're really neat when they're really active. And I've got a pretty big school going on. I think around 25 or so, maybe even more. I just keep adding them in. I was thinking about getting a dither fish, thinking about my black burlin swords, but I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to choose that or not. Here you can see one of the baby lucipinus getting pretty big, going the other way. I think he may have ate the other ones, as big as he's looking. There was a couple more in there, but how I breed them is with these little huts right here. So in here... There's a little hole here, and it's got a graded bottom. So this would be for like a drain. Oh, there you can see the baby. The baby's in there. Oh, that's a good size one. That's bigger than the one that was on there. Oh, I actually need to just get him out of there so he doesn't get eaten. Same with the other one. But, oh yeah, there. See, there's two in there. Okay. So they're getting through there, even with the parents in there. Oh... But yeah, it's just a drain grate, and then it has a cap, PVC plumbing, like cap. I guess it, I'm guessing it's about four inch cap. And then these bowls you can get from like hobby stores. This actually came with, see look, he's actually like striping. That's cool, I gotta catch him so he doesn't get eaten. Come here little fella. You're venturing in a big old room of sharks. Hey, hey you. Hey. Hey, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, you get back here. Oh boy. I bet he'll be alright. Guess we're about to find out. So far so good. Seems like he's okay. I would be surprised if they ate him. Actually. I gave him pretty well fed. The other one though is pretty small though. But yeah, just a bowl, a cap cover to a pipe, I think like four inches, same with this. So just test it out at your uh, local hardware store. And I believe they were glued on. Like I said, I just got mine with the fish when I first got them. Ken's from Radical Reefs actually hooked me up with it. So big shout out to Ken from Radical Reefs I don't know what do you guys think would be a good dither fish for these guys Because they do get shy like when I get in the water and get up close to them. They're kind of hungry They know it's around food time. So that's why they're mostly out and about so fun to watch them going in and out of these though. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this guy. Alright, found him a nice 10 gallon in the main fish room here. Looks like I got a couple more in there I can grab. Stick them next to the pastels. Got some leaf litter in there he can chew on. Other stuff. Sand, so it's nice and soft for him. Or her. Pretty cool little baby. And it does look like I got more in this other bowl. Now you can collect the eggs too. I actually just let it sit. They kept throwing eggs in it and then I was just like, ah, we'll see if any survive. And well, there you go. Some did survive. I like to turn the hole away so they feel comfortable. Like they won't get spooked if I walk by. 
But yeah, you can either collect eggs, you can get a lot more out of it. Make sure I don't break this. And ooh, looked like there was someone in there. A parent. There, oh yeah, you can see a couple babies. There's a good size one. Ooh, I don't want to mush them. Should probably take the whole bowl out. I'm gonna need both hands for that. Not, and my guess is, see, I don't feed these. So I'm guessing they, they're living off eggs and mom. Look at that one. That one's good size. Yo. Feeding frenzy. Oh, look at that. I can tell just by my voice. Holding completely still with it. They shy away when they hear my voice. Yum, 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 yum. And this is the setup here. 75 gallon, lots of hiding spaces. As far as the water, the water has been soft. It has been hard. I don't think it really has made a difference either way on the fish and the temperature is actually around 76 78 degrees right now they were actually breeding when it was a little cooler so I would say around 74 76 so really water water parameters aren't that important when it comes to breeding these guys as far as pH GH KH Pretty cool though, I could watch these guys forever. Find me a little sharks. Hey Scrunchy, what are you doing? Meow. I did use sand for the substrate because you can see they love to sift around the sand. And keep their mouth to the bottom. It's really cool to see this tank at night too because they really come out at night. That's something that's pretty much impossible or it would be really hard to catch on video. Alright, so there you have it. That's how I bred Cynodonis lucipinus. It was pretty easy. I didn't really come up with anything myself. I was lucky to even get that housing from Ken. It was already made so... I just stuck the fish in there, stuck those in there with it, and hey, it worked out. I'm pretty happy about it. But, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. I gotta stick with shipping here. I'm trying to get that done, and it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. I always try to do that late night. That way they're not in a box or bags all night waiting to get shipped out and all that. Anyways, I gotta get to that. So, if you liked it, hit that like button. Dislike it, hit that dislike button share hit the subscribe button if you haven't already notification bell try to pick one of the three of what they want you to do or whatever youtube's getting kind of crazy with things these days but anyways till next time everybody peace mm -hmm.